Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 13th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D endless runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover collision so we can collide with objects and stop running. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you can find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So collision, obviously, in an endless runner is vital. It stops us running into things and just passing through them. So at the moment, in our game view, Timmy can just basically run into anything that is in our track. Obviously, he can't go from side to side. That's fine. We don't need to worry about that collision anymore. However, what we can do is use a previously created script and modify it heavily to create that correct collision, for example, into this rock. So let's go on Timmy right here. And let's establish our first point of contact that we could conceivably crash into. We have this crate here, which still has no texture, I am fully aware. Uh, but we are going to use this as our base for a collision. Now, obviously, we've had a bit of collision before when it comes to using these coins here. If you remember, the script that we have on here, if I go down to a coin, is uh, this one. So you've got the rotate, obviously we don't need, and this one is collect coin. So I'm going to go into this collect coin script just to open up Visual Studio. Because I'm going to illustrate now just how easy it is to kind of start copy and pasting certain aspects of your game to create different effects. So, yes, thank you very much, Visual Studio. Um, so, yes, for example, this one here, we have some audio source. We're not going to add the audio for the collision in this tutorial. This is going to be more kind of run, hit something, stop, uh, play animation to fall backwards. Uh, but we can use the same sort of behavior, i.e., on trigger enter, and that's important. So if we go back into Unity and let's create a script. So right click, create, new script. And we'll call this collision detect. And then if we head into Visual Studio, we don't need any of the methods it's given us or the annotations, so we can get rid of those. But what we will do is we'll go into our coin collect, our collect coin here, and we'll copy this void on trigger enter. So copy, back into collision detect, and paste. We are going to add some animations. However, we just kind of need to establish things one at a time. What I mean by that is we need to establish the first thing is stop running. What makes us run? Well, if we go on to you uh, back into Unity and go to the level controls. I don't think it's that actually. Is it the actual character that runs? It is, isn't it? So our player movement. So if we untick that right now and press play, I think Timmy just runs on the spot. He does. So that means that when we collide with this, rather than go ping because we've collected a coin, we need to turn off that script. So head back into Unity. And let's define Timmy as a variable. So in square brackets, serialize field. And it's going to be a game object. And we'll call it the player, semicolon. So that means that as soon as we collide with this, let's get rid of that, uh, that them lines right there. And we can say the player dot get component, and in spiky brackets, the name of that script, which was player movement. So we can literally type player movement, open close bracket, and then, oops, close spiky bracket, should have said, open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon. So what we've done here is, although we usually say get component, we refer to like a collider, or we could refer to uh, an audio source. What we're actually doing here is referring to player movement as an actual component, so we can turn it off. So that means that as soon as we touch this box, this will stop. This will turn off and stop us moving. So let's head back here and let's save that for now, and then head into Unity again. 
And there are better, bigger, better ways of doing this. This is just kind of a real quick, cheap, easy way of doing this. And the earlier we get it done, it just makes things a lot easier because we can create and duplicate things as we go further in. And the script itself can be copied and pasted onto other objects. So for now, let's go to this crate, which we will texture. I promise you we will put a texture on there at some point. Um, we just need to add that script onto it, which is uh, the collision to text. So drag and drop onto there. And down here, you'll see, we just need to add the player. So in this case, let's drag and drop Timmy onto there. And let's press play. And what should happen is Timmy will run. And as soon as he touches this, he should stop. He'll keep running. He didn't. That's because we didn't set it as trigger. Ah. So much like the coins over here, remember we had that set is trigger because we are using that trigger. So I'm getting ahead of myself once again. Uh, but yeah, click is trigger. Make sure it's ticked. Press play. And then Timmy will indeed stop. His legs will keep going, but he will stop. There we go. So because he's done that, we can now use that to our advantage and play a different animation on Timmy. Now, this is where things start getting complicated, but a bit different than how we've done it with the coin. So if we go to Timmy himself, um, this is the original model that we have for Timmy, and it is the he's not running. Now, if we go to the characters section, go to Timmy. I remember when we imported all of these, we had a couple of different things. Um, so that's breathing, idle, stumble backwards. Here we are. So when we imported this from Mixamo, we brought this one in as well, stumble backwards. So if we take this animation now, hold control, press D, it will basically extract it from that. And we can use the animation freely. We can use it however we want. So what we can do is go onto Timmy's uh, model here, the animator, and if we double click the controller, this will bring up the animator. Now, this is something we haven't touched just yet, but all we need to do is drag and drop this stumble backwards over here. And what that means is that we now have two possible animations. The first animation that we had was the running one. That's just by default, Timmy will always do that. However, if we were to right click this, and set as default state. When we press play, Timmy will just stumble backwards. He'll move forward, but he'll stumble backwards. So that means that once we've stopped, we can theoretically play the stumble backwards animation. We can turn off running and play stumble backwards. So let's reset that to the default state so Timmy is running. And then if we go to Timmy itself, you remember that this doesn't have the animation on. So therefore we need to control the sub object, which is this one. So let's head back to our script and we'll name this a bit more conveniently. We'll have serialize field game object and we'll put just player anim, short for animation, semicolon. So what will happen here is that it will stop moving and then it gives us the opportunity to play the animation. So we would say player anim dot get component and it's break brackets animator oh close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of the animation. So in our case it was stumble backwards. And then quote, close bracket, semicolon. Now also what we should really do, I'm not sure if this is going to happen. We'll, we'll save this and play it for now, but we may need to put an extra little line of code in just in case. But what should happen now when we add the um, variable there? So we just need to add the player anim over there. There we go, that looks fine. Now I'm not entirely sure what is going to happen here. Either way, we will stop, but whether it will try and repeat the animation is yet to be seen. No. Perfect. So it's as simple as that. That's how we have now managed to stop Timmy from running. He, he will literally stop any object that we attach that script to. So for example, if we take this collision to text script, and if we copy that component, we can then, let's say, select this rock, and we can paste the component 
if it will let me. It does not want to let me. Why will it not let me? Okay, let's try something a little bit different. Uh, let's think on what's going on there. I thought I copied it. Right, let's do this. Let's go onto that. Let's copy the component and let's go onto our rock. And will it let us paste? I don't think it does let us paste it from here, does it? It doesn't. Uh, so let's go over here and just paste component as new. So there we go, instantly. I don't know why I thought I could paste it on there. It's obviously a component, so it's over here. Uh, so what will happen now is if we were to run into this rock, it will do the exact same thing. We haven't had to do anything additional. We've just had to put our script on a different object. But we haven't ticked his trigger, obviously. So I think that's the key to all of this, just making sure that you do trigger the right things. So we should stop right there. And as I say, it can be applied to anything at all. So let's apply it to this tree as well. So on the tree, right there. Uh, let's right where it says box slide, let's right click and pay component as new and tick is trigger. And one more time, let's check that we do indeed run into this tree. Should be able to, because I think we can. There we go. So we have theoretically run into it we've collided. And the same can be done with literally any other segment. So let's go into this segment right here. And uh, it is identical, isn't it? It is generally identical. So let's do this to multiple objects at the same time. So we've got the crate, the tree, and the rock. And we can paste as new and tick is trigger. So anytime we run into anything in this segment, we will indeed crash, we'll stop. And then once again with this segment, let's take everything that we can. So we've got a couple of things here. We've got a tree, we've got a tree, a tree, uh, and a couple of rocks. And same again, we can paste as new, tick is trigger. And do we have any more segments? We do. We have this segment right here which if I zoom out a little bit, there we go. So same again, it's it's as quick and simple as that. You know, it's, it's not like you have to do it to every single object one at a time. Paste is new, is trigger. And let's press play and let's run past some of these objects just to show that it, it's, uh, it is possible. So we can run past here, not a problem. And we can still collect our coins, perfect. Let's run past some more objects. Let's try and find uh, a section of this that we haven't run into before. So far, so good. So I can see some trees up ahead, just here. Let's run into one of these and just make sure everything worked. Fingers crossed, it doesn't make me look silly. <laughs> Foolish. Uh, so we should be able to hit this tree and stop. Perfect. So next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll add a bit more emphasis on this and we'll add some sound effects to have like a thud as soon as we hit something and then a sound effect to play like a stumble backwards uh, and i think we'll also add a fading out screen to kind of bring us back to uh, what will eventually be a main menu to cycle everything back around so until that next tutorial remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in the series and i'll see you next time